Okay, well, this is my last lecture. It's not really a lecture. It's just sort of a goodbye. This is a sort of a double goodbye. It's goodbye to you as my students this semester, and it's also goodbye to MAN 3320. I don't believe I'm going to be teaching this course anymore. I will be still teaching HR courses for Seminole State. I'm just going to be teaching the 2000 level as well as potentially teaching in the new BAS degree, Not no longer in the BIM program. I'm not going to be teaching in BIM, but uh, it's been a nice six-year run. Been teaching this course since the fall of 2016, so I can't believe that that was six years ago, but, uh, but been a good run, and I appreciate everything with everybody in this particular class and also in my previous classes. So it's kind of a bittersweet goodbye. Those of you who know Sound of Music, so long, farewell, Afida Zane, goodbye. So some housekeeping things. The project is due this Friday, April 22nd. I don't know if everybody's going to be watching this before the project's due, but it was due. If you need any extra time or if you need anything with there, there's a lot of flexibility that we've got here so those of you who are probably needing that flexibility are probably not even watching the video, or maybe you already did. But the course does end on Monday, April 25th. I guess for most of you, you'll get everything done on that. But grades aren't due until Tuesday, May the 2nd. I do plan on posting it early. If for whatever reason you need an extension for a couple days, or if you wanted to look to get some things done that you didn't get done before and you wanted to make those up, we can certainly talk about that. Just make sure you message me through Canvas. And please don't message on this because I'm going to post your grade through this. So I don't want to have to weed through a whole bunch of other stuff. Send me a separate email, a separate Canvas mail, which would definitely help. Please do your evaluations. It's very important that you do those. I, I like getting feedback just like everybody else does. I'd like to know how I can improve the things that I do. I know I do things a little bit different than probably some other folks. And what did you like? What didn't you like? Uh, any sort of feedback that you can give on that would be helpful. And finally, the extra credit. When you answer this to get your extra credit, your 10 points, what did you learn in this course that you think you can apply? What are some of the things that you're going to carry with you, whether that's on the legal side or compensation or something you did in the project? Also, if you wanted to give me direct feedback of something that you really liked in the course or whatever, you wanted to do that instead of the evaluations, that's fine too. So I'm going to tell you a little story. I, I, we've taken about three minutes so far, so hopefully I won't take much more than that, maybe another 10 minutes or so. But I graduated from UF in 1992, and the economy was in a recession. I was unable to find a job when I graduated. I didn't have a job waiting for me when I got out of college. It was actually 30 years ago now. can't believe it's been 30 years, but it's been 30 years. May of, May of 92 is when I graduated. I was going to job fairs, and I was trying to answer newspaper ads. I was trying to network, talk to people you know, friends of friends and people's parents and trying to do everything I could to try to find a job, but was unable to locate one. I really tried starting probably November of 91, I was looking. And it was very difficult at that point in time. I was interviewing for anything, management at Taco Bell and KFC and Home Depot and different places that right now you'd think, hey, man, if I graduated a degree, I probably wouldn't go and do that. But at that time, because of the way that things were, they were trying to get college graduates to improve their process. So my work history, the first seven years or so after I graduated from college was, was an absolute mess. I mean, if you look at this list, it's seven jobs in... Six and a half years, I kind of stabilized a little bit, maybe, after my first three jobs. The AMC theater job was hell. I hated it. I worked at the uh, theater over in Jacksonville. If you know Jacksonville at all, it's over off the Arlington Expressway, which is probably not the best area of Jacksonville. And I was working like six days a week, and my salary was $17,000, which... If you think that inflation was really bad or that there was a big difference, really, 
the difference is it's about you know maybe 50 percent more so seventeen thousand dollars back then um it's probably worth about thirty thousand right now somewhere along those lines so it really wasn't all that great i didn't have a lot of money didn't have any money my car blew up and i had to walk to work literally it was my car blew up the oil pump went and the engine just blew it was pretty terrible i sold it to my fraternity for a hundred dollars for car smash so that was the end of my buick but uh, i hated every minute of it i did get an opportunity finally got two days off in a row which i hadn't had the whole time i had worked there i had no pto didn't have a day off in in seven in seven months i never had a day off as far as like a, a pto day but i worked six days every single week and finally, we were we pressured the general manager to say, you know, hey, can we get two days off? And then finally, we started, they hired another manager, and we were able to get two days off. And the first time that I got two days off in a row, I went back to my hometown of Clearwater and looked for, for a job. I had some some interviews lined up. I interviewed with Tech Data, and I also interviewed, interviewed with Linvitech. What happened was, is I got hired by Tech Data first. And I just wanted to get the heck out of there. So I accepted the job at Tech Data. But that really didn't pay very much. It was like $6 an hour plus commissions and spiffs. And I was told that I'd be eligible for commissions right away. And then I found out I wasn't going to be eligible for six months. And that kind of set me off a little bit. I was not really happy about that. And it was one of several different experiences where what I was told during the interview or by the HR people, they either giving them benefit of the doubt didn't understand or they lied to me which was very impressionable to me and it it really made me a a firm believer in the concept of the realistic job preview when you interview someone that you really tell them what life is going to be like because if you lie to them and they realize pretty quickly that you lied to them you've already broken the employment relationship before it really even started it's kind of like lying to somebody just to get them to marry you, and then all of a sudden they realize they married a lie. They're going to want to get the heck out of that marriage pretty quick. So that was sort of the experience I had with Tech Data. After about five weeks, I think, four, four weeks, I think, four or five weeks, I got a call from Linvitech, who I'd previously interviewed with, and they offered me a job. And they said, hey, you know, we'd like you to come to work for us. And at, at Tech Data, I was making $6 an hour, and that eventually I was going to get commissions, but Linvitech, I think at the time, was offering me ten fifty three an hour, which equated to twenty one dollars an hour with opportunities also for overtime. And I was actually in a call center uh, doing pay, uh, customer support for arthroscopy equipment. It was very fascinating. It was I learned a lot about it, but I was basically answering phones when whenever there was product issues or somebody needed to order something that I would take you know, take the call and I would deal with that and we we had geographic areas and salespeople outside salespeople that we supported who were selling medical devices and we would basically put surgery kits together uh, we would price it all up and do all that and then answer incoming calls so that was really cool. I learned a lot, and they said they were going to train me to be a specialist and eventually be a salesperson, and it was all really great. But unfortunately, they sold a portion of the company to a company out of Philadelphia called Pilling. And uh, once that happened, they didn't need as many people in customer service. So I didn't have a job anymore. I got laid off. It's the only time in my life I've ever been let go from a job. I came in, came back from lunch and uh, my computer didn't work. I couldn't log into my computer. There had been layoffs in the morning, and I didn't know that. I ended up with a box and ended up uh, in the parking lot in my car just crying because I didn't know what to do. I didn't expect to lose my job that day. It was pretty traumatic for me, and I guess from that standpoint, it gives me a lot of empathy for somebody when that happens to them. I, I don't like doing layoffs. I don't mind... I don't say I don't mind. I mean, I always try to internalize it and remember that it's a real person with a real family that has to pay real bills whenever anybody gets let go. So I take that very, very seriously. But usually when I'm involved in a termination, it's because I've approved it because it's just. We've given somebody the opportunity to do something and they have, you know, they have done the wrong thing and it's fine to let them go. But 
if they've done the right thing and their job is gone, that really kind of sucks. So I don't really like doing those things. So I got a job after a little while. I was getting unemployment for about six weeks, and then I found a job with Barry Sprint Publishing, back to making $6 an hour, plus commissions. It was inside sales. And I was selling Yellow Page ads. That's how old I am. I actually sold Yellow Page ads back when the Yellow Pages were something. And I remember my father, who was an engineer, uh, retired. Now he's retired, but he was an engineer, and he was said, you know, eventually everything's going to be on the internet. And back then we had dial-up, so I'm thinking, oh yeah, sure, I want to find, I want to order a pizza, and I'm going to dial up the internet. I'm going to wait until I can get through on AOL, get through the whole thing, and then open the web browser, and then try to find where Pizza Hut is. Because back then we didn't even have Google. It was kind of crazy, you know. It's like I feel like like I'm your old uncle telling you what life was like back when horse and buggy days. But, yeah, we we sold Yellow Page ads, and I did fairly good with that. Um, wasn't great. And I was kind of in the middle of the sales board, and some people, they were shutting down the office in Tampa, and some people were given the option of going to Ocala, and some people were given the option of moving to Naples, and some people were given the option of taking a package. And I had just built a house, and I was my first house, a little starter home. And I decided, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to find something else to do. And some people were moving over to this community smart books thing, which was a rival yellow page ad uh, book sales. And I went to work for them, and that was the biggest mistake of my life. Worst job I've ever had, even worse than the theaters. It was terrible. It was awful. Never, ever, ever would want that experience for anybody ever. I think I only worked there for like six or seven weeks. It wasn't that long. Maybe it was a little bit longer than that, I guess. Yeah, August to to October. Because I left like the first week of... I went there in, at the end of August, and I le- I was already gone by the 1st of November. I just literally took that as a way that I could still get a check while I was getting my severance stuff from from Barry Sprint. So once that stuff let, let out, I had like no money and no opportunity. I sold one ad in six weeks. It was bad. It's very, very bad. But I got a job with Mid-Atlantic Companies Limited, and that was really my first adult job, my first grown-up job where I was actually, I got my insurance license, and I was right, underwriting insurance packages and doing appointment setting, and I really learned a lot about communication, about business communication, business writing. I, it was a good experience for me. I really, really did learn a lot. I, I had gotten married while I was working for Linvitech that summer, and uh, I got divorced while I was working for Mid Atlantic. I didn't last long in marriage number one, so uh, yeah, I I was. It was time for me to move on. I was making a lot of changes in my life at that point in time, so I decided I didn't want to be inside anymore. I wanted to try my hand at outside sales. So I started working for CompuPaya Florida. That was my first outside sales job, which was cool. Then I went to ADP. ADP was the big 300, 800-pound gorilla in the whole payroll world, so I was selling against ADP. I was doing pretty well selling against them, so I got a job with Total Source, which is their employee leasing PEO division, and I worked there for two years. Uh, ADP is a, cre- a pressure cooker. Some months I did great. Some months I didn't do great. I didn't really like sales that much. I didn't like the pressure of sales. I didn't like the the whole nature of it i really got tired of cold calling people and doing it and i just like man i can't do this for the rest of my life i can't do that at the time one of my clients which back then was called diabetic supply of usa in clearwater they called me up and they said you know hey we're starting an hr department do you know anybody who might want to become uh our hr director do you have anybody to recommend and i was like actually i've been thinking about getting a job in HR myself, I you know maybe I could do that. So I went in for the interview and I sold them my, my last great sales job. I sold them on me actually starting their HR department for them, and they took a chance on me. And I really appreciate that they did that because that career change was just the catalyst. While I worked for them, we did mergers and acquisitions. We were eighty five employees when I started the HR department. By the time I left. 
the combined companies were about 1,800. Uh, and I actually led HR. I was the director of HR over 850. And then they hired somebody on top of me. Then there was a merger. And then the person they hired on top of me left. And then somebody else came in. And she, she and I did not see eye to eye. She felt I was a threat to her and tried to marginalize me. And it, it was time for me to move on, which actually worked out fine because they moved the company headquarters to Dallas and everybody lost their job. That was in 2011. Like five years later, everybody was gone. And uh, I don't know, it's a mess. I'm glad I, I got off that merry-go-round. But I did uh, get the opportunity with Wigginton in 2006 and have never looked back. It's been a great opportunity for me. And I'm doing really cool stuff with really cool people and I love what I do. I was at a barbecue, a charity barbecue in 2009. Oh, backing up, when I was at CCS, I had a mentor, Joe Capper, who was our CEO. And uh, he told me, he said, do you want to stay in HR? Because I can get you in operations. I can get you a lot of other stuff. And I said, you know what? I love HR. I said, I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is great. And he said, that's cool. He said, that's really cool you want to do that. Most people are just like, they want to go after the money or they want to go after this. I said, no, it's not about the money for me. I like I like doing what I'm doing. I like the challenge of it. I like being able to do different things. It's exciting. Everybody, Every day is a little bit different. And I, I like that. I don't like things mundane. I like challenges. I like solving problems. So HR is a really cool place for me to be. I like it. So he said, well, if you're going to do this for a living and you want to advance, you should probably get a master's degree. So he convinced me to get my master's degree. And I did. And I was actually at a charity barbecue in 2009. It was like January or February of 2009. And the husband of the executive vice president of... HR for Seminole State was I was on a lead, in a leadership group with him and he said hey you know Seminole State's looking for HR professors they don't have a professor of HR would you consider teaching no back it up back it up he said do you know anybody who has a master's degree in human resources I said well I have a master's degree in human resources and he said oh my gosh you can teach so the next thing I knew, I'm on the phone, and fall of 2009, I'm teaching two courses, and uh, started off by teaching MNA 2325 and MNA 2403, which I actually still teach both of those courses. So that's what I started teaching back in 2009, and have been teaching. I've been the only professor for those courses ever since. Um, at this point, I'm going to be going back to teaching uh, MAN 2300 that I, I did teach that for a number of years. I'm, I'm going back to teaching that uh, as well as potentially, like I said, teaching in the BAS program. And uh, it's been very fulfilling for me. I've really learned a lot and I appreciate certainly the interaction. It, it kind of keeps me sharp. I think when you do something for a long period of time and you stay with the same organization, you don't get a lot of new experiences. But but really, I, I think I learn just as much as I teach, and I, I really do appreciate that. And constantly reviewing the materials for PowerPoints and for these lectures and things like that, it really keeps me sharp. I find myself saying the same things in lectures as I do in management training and other things that I do. I'm actually applying what I'm learning as I go. So this is, this is really cool for me, and I, I, I've really enjoyed that experience. So my annual earnings, and I, I'm putting this up here. I'll tell you on the next slide a little bit more about that. But this is what I made. And keep in mind, in you know 1992, uh, the value of a dollar it's like like you know two two to one. By the time you get to the end of this period, by 1999, it's about one and a half. So so 19 1999 dollars I was making the equivalent of now of about seventy five thousand dollars. So when we, we sort of look at that and you, you kind of split the difference maybe in there when I'm making 20,000, you know, that might be the equivalent of 30,000 or 31,000. But, you know, you look at those first couple of years there, I wasn't making big money and I wasn't really making any big money anywhere through that. You know, times were, were very, very tough for me. I had a really hard time paying my rent. I had a lot of times where if I was in between, uh, I was unable to pay for stuff and and I would have to make a choice whether I was going to go to the grocery store or go out with my friends 
And I told myself back then, I said, you know when I'm really going to have it made because I love music. When I'm really going to know I've had it made is when I can walk into a record store and I can buy whatever I want. Well, you know what? By that standard, I got it made. And that's pretty much what it is. I live pretty simply after that. Obviously, I make more than $50,000, $51,000, but it took me a while. It took me a long, long time. You know, when you're an engineer graduating now, or back then when you were an engineer graduating, you know, you were hired out at forty-five dollars or $50,000 a year. You know, it took me a long time to, to really get to the point where I was at least financially comfortable. And, you know, a lot of those times I struggled. I mean, when I left Mid-Atlantic and I went to CompuPay, you see my, co- my compensation went down 97 to 98. And that's when my first year when I was divorced. So that was a huge struggle for me. It was a huge struggle year. My credit was kind of shot after that year, trying to make it on my own after being, you know, double income, going down to, to, to just the one income. And actually, my, my ex-wife, my, my first ex-wife, out-earned me uh, fairly well. I mean, she, she was a teacher that also did some tutoring stuff on the side. So we, she usually made more than I did in, in, a, in an annual, on an annual basis back then. And uh, so it took me a while. It took me a while to kind of, kind of find my way. So why am I telling you all this? Why am I sharing you how much money I made in my work history? I'm sharing you this because I've been there and I've done that. I mean, you guys may look at me as a 52-year-old guy that's vice president and he's professor and he's all this stuff. I was like struggling, completely struggling through my 20s and absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Made a career change at 31. I... I've I've been where you guys are. So if you ever feel like, well, I can't ask him because he's, like I said, vice president and professor. No, he's just a regular guy who happened to get a lot of help that got him to where he is today. Other people that I worked with who referred me to this person, the thing, the patience of people that have taught me, what I learned when I worked at Mid Atlantic, which is which I still carry with me, on how to how to have executive presence and how to be able to talk to people who have a hell of a lot more money than you do and that you think are a lot more important than you. I learned a lot about about people. I learned a lot in sales training and the different things that I did that helped me relate to all the things that I do. And I met people along the way that gave me a chance. The people at Diabetic Supply, which became CCS Medical, gave me a chance. They gave me a shot. They said, you know what? We'll give you a shot. We'll give you a try. We'll see how this works. I had a lot of other people that I worked with earlier, even before I graduated from college, that helped me along the way, that did little things for me, that that gave me opportunities, recommendations, people that I could lean on and ask questions to, people who could steer me right. Um, you know, no one does it alone. No one does it alone. You know, we we are all we are all really products of the people that have helped us along the way. So make sure that, that you pay it forward. That's what I'm doing. I'm paying it forward. I'm thankful for the opportunities that I got and the people who referred me mentors, had a professor, Dr. Pharisee, uh, who passed away a long time ago, but he was, he was my mentor at the university of Florida. I learned a lot from him was, uh, one of the great human beings that I've ever known. So now that I have the opportunity to be in academia, I sort of use him as a role model to try to help students. So how can I help you? I can review your resume. So if you're looking to get some tips on how you can get your resume noticed, maybe some tips on if you're going to interview, what are the things to do? As far as if it's a job you really want, follow up, call them up, be a pain in the neck. Don't just think you submitted on Indeed. I get a lot of resumes on Indeed. I get a lot of stuff I don't look at, man. It's kind of crazy. Uh, If, you know, job search, if you're looking for a job, let me know. If you're looking for a job in HR, let me know that too. I might be able to steer you to an opportunity. So let me know that. Um, If I've gotten to know you through this course, give me, I might be able to give you a letter of recommendation. Certainly, if you haven't really been participating, you're probably not even listening to this lecture because I think only like by this point, only like, uh, a third of you are actually listening to the lecture. So thank you. You know, that's always cool when I get your feedback. That's good. Um, and then finally, just answer questions about, oh, I guess I didn't finish that when I was do- <laughs> doing the slide. Oops, I just sort of stopped. Um, answer questions about HR stuff. If you've got a, a legal question or if you've got anything else, 
that is something that I can do for you. But that's about all I got. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate the feedback, reading your responses, and kind of getting to know quite a number of you. And, uh, you know, again, if there's anything I can do for you, let me know. If you've got questions about anything about the course end or whatever, uh, you can still message me. Like I said, I'm not going to be teaching this course anymore, I don't think. But, uh, you know, I'll still be teaching for Seminole State. So if you want to take any HR electives, any of the HR MNA courses, you can take my courses. So that's all I got. Thanks. Good luck, everybody. Take care.